Good evening. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for July 17, 2019, Room 124, Town Hall. It is now 7.09. Um, remind people this meeting is being audio and video recorded per the open meeting laws of the state of Massachusetts. Tonight we have a couple of public hearings. We're going to continue the four and six Hill Street special permits, the preserved at Abbeville, Abbeville Commons. We have an appeals hearing at 194 Main Street. We have an appeal, a special permit for 81 Pond Street, and we have a six Hill Street appeal. It is now 710. Four and six Hill Street special permits. The applicant via his attorney has asked us to continue his hearing until August 21st at seven o'clock. He has filed with the planning board for site plan review. And um, he feels he'll need that amount of time before he comes before our board again for a special permit. So I'd ask for a motion to continue the four and six Hill Street special permits until August 21st at 7 p.m. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, tw August 24th, right? You said 21st. 21st. Oh, 21st? Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. All those, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the next hearing, the Preserve at Abbeville and Abbeville Commons, uh, which were continued from 619. Uh, the applicant has asked us to continue his hearings until September 4th at 7 p.m. He is uh, working with the Mann family to again put together a purchase and sale agreement. Uh, we did get correspondence from Mass Housing. I think everybody got in their package from Greg Watson, which basically stated that even though he does not have a purchase and sale agreement and he has limited site review because he has his initial uh, request for the 40B that he still has control and he still can continue on with his 40B. That because he doesn't have a PNS, it does not mean that the project cannot continue. And, uh, and it, it, his citing is that these projects change shape many times. They, uh, they don't always end up like they begin. So therefore, the, the uh, mass housing does not look at it and say because you've lost your personal sale agreement you no longer can work on this project so he continues to have his 40 B's in play for both Abbeville Commons and Abbeville Preserve so I'd ask for a motion to continue the Abbeville Preserve at and Abbeville Commons until September 4th at 7 p.m. so moved we have second second any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. okay our next hearing is at 715, which is 194 Main Street, which I will recuse myself, and uh, Chairman Caliza will take over that, which is in another three minutes. So why we wait, why don't we, um, why don't we, can we do our board reorganization, Amy, for the next four minutes? Okay. Uh, right now, currently, Devin, you are on the B1, our representative to the B1 zoning. Yes. Okay, you're going to continue with that. When does that expire? Is that a is that an expiration date? I'm not positive. Okay, so you will continue to do that. Yes, I will. So could I have a motion to have Devin continue as our B1 representative to the um, town center zoning district? So, so moved. moved. Yep. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we have to um, vote for the board. Uh, at the last or two meetings ago, I did agree to continue to be the chairman as long as the other members, no other member wanted to take the role. Um, I think everybody agreed that they would like me to continue to be the chairman and like uh, Michael Caliza to be the vice chairman and for Joe Sebastiano to continue to be the clerk yes. with Don Hansen as his assistant. Sure. Do I have a motion to approve those positions? I so move. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? And I will add that, Medora, you've agreed to be an associate member, continue to be an associate member as, as much time as you can put forward to us. Yeah, I would anticipate that's not going to be more than six to eight more weeks. So it'll okay. be a few more meetings. But I, it would be a disservice to continue to sit in this position if I can't actually sit in this position physically in the room. So I, I don't see a reason to, to continue on if I can't do it. But I'm happy to stay. I'm hoping someone may, to all the people watching at home, someone may have an interest in volunteering for the board. We will have two open seats on the Zoning Board of Appeals, so anybody interested in becoming an associate member, please, uh, there is an application on the town website, or you can see Amy to uh, fill an application as well. So do I have a, uh, any further discussion with regard to the 
the voting board reorganization? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It is now roughly 714. Chris, can we take a one minute recess? And then we will continue at 715 with the 194 Main Street appeal. Ready to make a mess? <laughs> For this one, we have to have Here, one, two, three. More How many voting members do we need? Six uh, inches of table, if you like it. <laughs> How many voting members like do we need? Out. For this? <laughs> okay, we have enough. Okay. Uh, good evening. Welcome back to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Mike. Uh, Mike. Uh, Chairman Weeder is um, recusing himself from this hearing. And so I'm stepping in uh, and filling in uh, for this particular continuation. Uh, we've read the notice of public hearing into the record, and so uh, we might as well begin the hearing at, uh, at this point in time. Uh, the building commissioner, Mr. Bullock, is here. And uh, if you'd like to go first and go give us some background on this, we'd, sure. uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Enough copies? Yeah. We've got an extra one, Bob. Sure. Do you need a copy of the file? Yeah. I have, I'll keep my, you take from mine. Okay. I have one more copy if somebody wants it. <coughs> Thank you. Does anybody else want it? Yeah. Did uh, Amy, did she want to look at it? Did you want to see a copy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I got one for you. Okay. Okay, Bob, when you're ready, we'll start taking your testimony. Okay. Um, on November 28th, uh, the fire chief and I um, were doing an inspection at um, 194 Main Street of Bork's Restaurant, uh, which we do every year. It's a one ten inspection uh, based on the building code. Uh, while I'm at that, uh, sites that uh, have more than one use in the building, the fire chief has asked me to go through the building with him because he does yearly inspections on um, all the commercial buildings in town. 
So while we're there, he's asked me to go along with him uh, to do those inspections. We've done that for the past 15 years. And so when we were walking through the building, um, in the lower level, the, uh, we found there was a um, number of cars down there, um, I think approximately 18 cars. In the past, there's, you know, uh, at times, most of the time there weren't any, but there are times when there might have been two or three down there, um, incidental to the, um, the person that owned the building. Um, so uh, the fire chief called the owner of the building, um, Mr. Craig Leary, and asked them if they were, whose cars they were. He said that they were his. Um, we, um, just made a comment about the fire protection that was over put in over the uh, cars, and um, we finished our, our um, inspection of the building and left. Uh, about an hour and a half later, I got a call from Mr. Weeder that um, he said that they were his cars. Um, I didn't make any comments to it at the time. I was kind of um, just taking the information in and. Uh, uh, a couple days later, I called him, uh, explained to him that he need to file an F-11A for a new tenancy in a uh, commercial building. The, um, he um, didn't seem to be in agreement with it. Uh, as you can see, I, um, the different um, emails and uh, letters that were sent out is in your packet there that uh, I tried to explain to him the necessity of uh, why, you know, the F-11A process, why he needs to file the form. Uh, he, um, as I continue to encourage him, I had told him at first I wasn't going to, I wouldn't be able to, uh, to approve it uh, based on the fact that at the time that wasn't an allowed use in the um, B-1 district unless he got a class two license. Uh, and then you'll see in uh, the letter, one of the letters on, um, uh, March 14th that he, he received the class 2 license uh, so it is an allowed use but it still doesn't negate the fact that a filing was still necessary uh, in the letter uh, the first letter that was sent out in um, December it lays out that upon a payment of a fee and a formal application for a determination submitted to the building commissioner for change of use or a change uh, to an existing occupied building, the site plan approval uh, requirements may not apply if all the following information is provided and the following conditions A through uh, through F are determined to exist in, uh, uh, by the building commissioner. So uh, it's pretty specific that in each one of these cases it should be, this form should be filed with the, uh, the building department. Uh, he continued to refuse. I waited, um, you know, I, as I sent you the letters up until April 23rd, I gave him another seven day notice. And then on uh, May 6th, I started the fines um, because his refusal to, um, to follow the zoning bylaws uh, of the town. Um, I have a letter that I'd like to read from the, um, the uh, fire chief. If I, uh, if you allow me to, um, this is his version of our inspection on that day. Um, oh, excuse me, is it this letter? It is. Does everyone have a copy of this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, report to the Board of Selectmen relative to Al Craig Larry allegations of December 20th, 2018. This report has been authored in response to allegations forwarded to the Norfolk Board of Selectmen by Al Crigleri via an email dated December 20th, 2018 and provided to the fire chief on the same date. The purpose of this report is to empirically relate all actions, conditions, and authority within the purview of the fire chief. Furthermore, the report will outline the relationship between the building commissioner and fire chief conducting building inspections. On November 28, 2018, Bob Bullock, Building Commissioner, and I conducted the annual 110 inspection of 194 Main Street, Borks. This inspection involves reissuance of the permit by, by the Building Department for pur business purposes, per, I'm sorry, business operations, i.e. a restaurant. 
Such an inspection requires the fire chief to perform a fire safety inspection and subsequently sign the permit as endorsement that the occupancy is devoid of violations pertaining to the fire regulations. Given the fire department is responsible for the fire safety within commercial buildings as a convenience to property owners and or building occupants, tenants originating in 2004 upon my appointment as Norfolk's fire chief, the building commissioner, by my invitation, participates in all such inspections. I would also note the inspection of 194 Main Street since 2004 has encompassed all areas of the building. Finally, the inspection of this property has never originated with a request for approval to enter from the building owner or tenants. Following the inspection of books, we entered the Main Street Shave. This business opens in a common area shared with the former Norfolk Credit Union. The common area contains restrooms. A door from the common area leads to the basement. This door was found unlocked and we entered. Again, it should be noted that this has been past uh, practice for the inspection. Located within the basement area were a number of stored vehicles, automobiles, many of the foreign uh, manufacturer. Past inspections have found such uh, storage under the building's former owner. Storage of vehicles in this area was never a regulatory issue under the fire regulations, given the fire separation between the basement and the first floor. Bullock related he believed the vehicles could be owned by Chris Weider. I contacted the building owner, Quag Larry, by cell phone and learned the vehicles stored were under his ownership. Later that same day, Weider visited the fire station and advised the vehicles uh, stored were under his ownership and not Quag Larry's. Weider asked if he should advise Bullock of such and was informed that that was his decision by the fire regulations do not pertain to ownership of the vehicles and but only the storage, which again was compliant. And the second page is just all the different 527 CMR Board of Fire Prevention regulations uh, that state that, um, you know, on um, 1.7.7 inspections, to the full extent allowed by the provisions of Mass General Law 148, the authority having jurisdiction shall authorize to inspect at all reasonable times any building or premises for dangerous or hazardous conditions or materials to, uh, in order to determine compliance with this code. Uh, the next um, uh, code is uh, coordinated inspections. In circ circumstances involving compliance with two or more Massachusetts codes, including the building code, while enforcing this code, shall to the extent as reasonably practicable coordinate inspections so that owners and occupants or a building or structure shall not be subjected to visits by numerous inspectors, uh, nor multiple or conflicting orders. Mass General Law 148, the head of the fire department may in the performance of the duties imposed by the chapter or in furtherance of the purpose of any provisions of any law, ordinance, or of any rule or regulation of the Board of Fire Prevention regulations enter at any reasonable hour any building to make inspection or investigation without being held or deemed to be guilty of trespassing. Mass General Law 148, Section 5, entry upon premises and removal of combustible materials conditions to be remedied penalty. The head of the fire department shall at any reasonable hour enter into buildings, make an investigation as to the existence of conditions likely to cause fire. Therefore, the inspections of 194 Main Street with the building commissioner has clearly been established through the regulations and the entry of the fire chief and the building commissioner remains a concert with these regulations. Editorial note, the building commissioner and I have entered into 194 Main Street since the ownership became uh, a Quigleary property without dissent from the owner. Furthermore, the building commissioner and I have also inspected the property known as Rocco Plaza, 17 Pine Street since construction ownership by Craig Leary since 2010, again, without dissent of the owner. I would like to add that only when the ins um, there was a uh, restaurant there was I there. Um, any other time, it was only during the construction of that property. Um, I read all that just so that you understand that this is, um, there's been a lot of um, conjecture. Um, there's been, um, you know, on the selectmen's meeting, uh, Mr. Craig Leary there was trying to paint a picture that we were there uh, with an abuse of power, we were there to um, do 
uh, harm to him in some way, and that is the furthest from the truth. We, we are there to check the building for um, safety, to make sure that doors aren't stuck closed, that the uh, emergency lights are working, to make sure that the fire extinguishers are, um, have been maintained, uh, and to make sure that there isn't any fire hazards within the building. So uh, based on that, um, I just want to put that to rest that, um, you know, there are comments made that, you know, we've gone on to a, another property that was videotaped, and I want to I clear that up as well because that was pertaining to 81 Pond Street. 81 Pond Street had filed an F11A, f again, for a site plan review process to see whether or not they, they needed a... Um, a site plan done uh, on that property. In the in the uh, review of these F11As, we visit the properties and we look at them to see whether or not they comply with the uh, with the site plans that were, have been signed off. That property, uh, the parking for that property is actually behind a fence. So we walked around the building to get over to where that parking lot was to see whether or not uh, what kind of shape it was in and whether or not it complied to the uh, original uh, site plan that was done. There was no malintent by going there other than to answer the, uh, the application that was presented to us uh, at the building department. Uh, th and there is work that need to be done. I did approve that today because um, there's a, there was a uh, application that was presented on the 2nd of July uh, as from the last meeting that we had on the 3rd of July, we sent them an email stating that we needed more information. We received an email yesterday um, answering that email, uh, and we, I responded to it today by apply, to approving that application under conditions that the parking area that right now has some piles of dirt and some other uh, doesn't have any uh, curb stops for the different parking area uh, spaces. Uh, and the handicap parking needs to be um, clearly p painted on the uh, driveway as well as a sign. So I just want to know, let you know that that's what all these things have been circulating around. So um, I wanted to make sure that that was out there. Um, that we're not out, you know, going in people's backyards or anything else. We're responding to. Um, a commercial application uh, for a site plan review. So, uh, any questions? Was there anything ever put in writing about uh, stating that uh, there was a question as to why you did that site plan review to begin with? Why I did the site plan review to begin but with? You, you said there was some concern about the fact that this was something out of the ordinary in doing the site plan with yourself and the fire chief and that's why you spoke at great length about that okay that this was standard operating procedure oh yeah and, as and far as doing the inspection yes, of the building yes was there anything put in writing that said um, you didn't have any right to come in here or anything like that or was this just no it's just been a okay. course of business that we've done to, you know uh, it was since the fire chief has been here. Prior to the fire chief being here, I did these inspections by myself, and I just did the restaurants. No, no, I meant, was there anything put in writing by the applicant or any other parties that have said, you know, Don't how come? come on my property? Yes. No. Okay. I, I did receive one, it was either yesterday or today, at 81 Pond Street, not to come on their property. Okay. Uh, prior to that, no, I've never received one that said that. Um, I have a question, Bob. The um, F11A, uh, in the 15 or so years that you've been the commissioner, what's the percent of buildings uh, or new tenants or new buildings that are required to fill it out? Has it been a consistent administration? 100% of everybody has had to fill out an F11A, and if it's not 100%, what percent of people have? Um, that's really hard to say uh, because um, we try to get everyone. Does it mean that we're successful to get everyone uh, to do it? It's um, sometimes it's 
things people move into properties and we don't know anything about it i didn't know anything about the fact that you know uh, mr weeder has been in the property since march of last year I, I didn't know until december when we actually did an inspection um so are there properties out there that that's happened i'm sure of it um i don't do inspections on every commercial property that's a, the job of the um the fire department um, they don't inform me when someone's changed over. Um, so the th all the ones that we know about, we address. So every you don't go on every inspection then with the fire chief? No, we don't. I, only, only the buildings that have a uh, restaurant in the building with multiple tenants, uh, each one of those we've gone through every year. Okay, so it's, it's I think it's that's what he meant, but he, you know, the way he worded it. Okay, so is it fair to say that, that some people have skated by and not been required to do an F11A, and, and some have? That could have happened, yep. Okay. Now, a uh, follow-up question on the 81 Pond Street. Just, I was listening to you, but I missed some of the detail. Uh, it, it, it sounds like you've resolved this with these mm -hmm. people now? Yes. So is, this is no longer an issue or? Well, in what resolved it was the, there was a question of, there's a, I, I believe it's 50 by 50 foot building garage that's attached to the building that they didn't, um, they didn't describe a use to that space. In that space, if it's a storage area, then there's one parking space for every 500 square feet of storage area. So um, if, it's, if it's storage, so you know, they wrote to me uh, today, I believe, that they are no, they're gonna empty that space and they're not gonna use that space. The only space that they're going to use is what's described on the plan as a salon. So based on that, um, and that they would file another F11A when they find a tenant for that other space to be able to, um, um, to utilize that and then at that point we will have to determine whether or not the parking requirements you know are being met for that new use so, so and, and I just thought of one more thing what triggers the the requirement for an F11A Let, let's say I want to open up a small business in um, Bork's building or one of these buildings do I have to do an F11A if, if I open up an office or a barbershop or a hair salon yes and, and how am I supposed to know that I mean do, is that well, um, I'm not the as, building owner. I just want to move in, operate my business, and and business owners should know the you know the zoning um, portions that apply to their uh, their biz businesses. We try hard to um, to notify them that um, this is the case. Um, I could tell you that Mr. Craig Leary, uh, when he built 17 Pine Street, uh, we had a conversation because every person that came down there to look at you know, the space. He was sending it down to our office and so that we could answer all the questions for them. Uh, and I was pushing back to say, look, at, you need to answer these questions for them and, and give them the information that they need. So um, uh, that's something that happened when he first start, came to town, when he started uh, working on uh, 17 Pine Street. So as far as your question goes, F11 starts off um, with, you know, in all districts, no building or structure shall be constructed or externally enlarged, and no use shall be expanded in ground area or established in an existing building except in conformity with a site plan bearing the endorsement of the approval of the planning board. So then you can jump down to uh, the conditions of non applicability. So that it doesn't apply. But the only way that it's conditions of a non applicability is upon a payment of a fee and the formal application for a determination submitted to the building uh, commissioner uh, for the change of use or change to an existing occupied building uh, and then there's criteria that needs to be followed based on that and that's where the application has those questions to be answered and we're trying to get people to understand that they have to answer all the questions what, what if there's no change in use it's it's always a change for somebody else to come in there there are times when it's it's it is so insignificant that we've we've basically let it go um you know 
you're in there as an office this guy comes in and you know sits at a desk right next to you he, he takes over the office you know we're not getting involved with that okay. so if somebody else stored cars down there would that be considered a new or different use if somebody else comes in well, and stores cars down there you know and I answered that in the first email that you know someone putting down a, you know two or three cars down there that's kind of an incidental use it's not really a primary use when you fill the room with cars that becomes more of a primary use for the property and you know I, I addressed that in the first letter that I I had with Mr. Weeder. Other questions from members of the board? I have a question. The historical use for having three or four cars down there as opposed to I think it said 11 cars were found down uh, there now? So 18. 18 okay so that's more <laughs> so that's different but historically I mean was it the owner that was storing vehicles down there was I mean in typically and yes so those are the building owners vehicles that are down there currently with the situation I, I honestly don't know is is rent being paid to store these cars um, that's something you'd have to ask him because I mean that to me seems like a different use if that's the case I don't know if it is or not because historically I mean if it's my building I put my cars down there it is a little bit different I think if you triple the number of cars and start receiving yeah. money for it I would also add that you know that box has a couple boats down that they have stored typically down in the basement that we've gone down uh, as part of that uh, restaurant inspection uh, and so we've seen them down there it, it's an incidental to a tenant that's got the primary resident um, tendency upstairs uh, the um, you know if in the past and, and this is another point that I, I want to make is in the past it wasn't an allowed use the only reason it's an allowed use now is because you went and got the class 2 license um, prior to that it wasn't and that's all part of this process of the F11A is you know when somebody moves into a space uh, that they how do we know that um, you know they can assume that they're allowed by um, by right in the zoning but uh, if they don't really know and even if they do know that's part of our job to review to make sure that they have um, could, could, Bob could you elaborate you said talk about this class two license could you just elaborate on what um, the limited used car uh, sales um, which is in their um, definition uh, was changed um, recently to allow it was a online sales of uh, of used cars and that's typically what it was up until about a year ago uh, we changed the zoning to allow for a storage but not display of um, used auto cars so this is allowed in the uh, B1 district um, but in the definition it says use of an office building and or site to conduct a business requiring a class 2 license under the provisions of mass general uh, general law chapter 140 section 59 for the sale and preparation of used motor vehicles but which does not display vehicles for sale on the premises um, in this book doesn't have it updated but it does say that you can store them now so I'm, I'm trying to in lieu of that I'm trying to understand and reading through the stuff that I read through earlier and just now that you mentioned to the applicant they had to have a class 2 and they had to fill out the F11 form 111 right um, the applicant got the class 2 so if the applicant in fact filled out the form and paid the fee would the applicant have uh, complied with all the regulations of the building department? And I say that in the letter. File the form with the hundred dollar fee, and I will be uh, it will be approved, and we'll end this. And he preferred to spend the three hundred dollars and appeal my decision. For what reason I don't understand. Okay. So, Bob, just to zero in on the F11A, we're, we're, there's three different chunks to it. We're mainly concerned about A1. Yes. A1. So the other. Determination of non applicability. Uh, Does it really apply if, you know, the others get into an exempt right. site plan? All right. So I just want to try to simplify what we're focused on, and we're mainly focused on F11A1, not the other components. 
Mm -hmm. All right. All right, good. Uh, further questions from members of the board for Mr. Bullock? Uh, okay. Seeing none, we reserve the right to uh, call, you back. call you back. So if you could stick around, that'd be great. Mr. Weeder. Good evening. Thank you for having me. This is the appeal of 194 Main Street. It has nothing to do with 81 Pond Street. Got a little confusing there. Uh, first of all, Class 2 license. Anybody on this board can get a Class 2 license. Class 2 license has nothing to do with this property. I received a Class 2 license because I found out in the town of Norfolk you could still get a Class 2 license. I filled out the application, so it's an allowed thing to do. I took advantage of it. Second of all is, I have permission from Mr. Craglieri, who is the owner of 194 Main Street, to act as his agent for this hearing. If you will all look at your F-1 form, one of the problems with the F-1 form that Mr. Bullock asked me to fill out is it must be filled up by the name of the owner or legally authorized agent. I am not the owner of 194 Main Street. I'm a tenant, same as Burke's Restaurant. The owner of 194 Main Street is Al Craglieri, so the only one, according to our zoning law definitions, who can fill out an F-1 11A is Mr. Quagliari. He has given me permission tonight, though, to handle this appeal. The F11A, as we all know, Mr. Bullock read it clearly. Amy, can you put that up on the board, the violation? Clearly states that an increase in use, footprint, ground area, a new business established, has to require site plan approval. Must. And then our bylaws allow five exemptions. But that's if you have a change in use in ground area to an existing building. I'm not sure which document. The violation to keep going up. No, my, my paperwork. The board all has my paperwork, so maybe you can follow along there if Amy can't bring it up. In the B1, Mr. Bullock is correct. Auto storage is not allowed in our current zoning. Our current zoning was established in 1993. If you look at Exhibit 6, Rich McCarthy verified that the B1 district was formed in 1993. So anything prior to that is a non-conforming, pre-existing use. 194 Main Street has always had cars in it since Glenn Coulter owned it in 1980. Now, one after, Exhibit number 4 you'll see, or Exhibit number 3 from Glenn Coulter, he clearly states that he had his cars and other cars in that building from 1980 to 2014. When Mr. Quagliari bought the building in 2015, he stored cars in that building. The use of that basement has been the storage of automobiles. The use of Burke's basement has been the storage of motorized boats. That's what's in the basement. Mr. Bullock has no records of the inspections per the public records request for the basement of 194 Main Street. So I think the only legal documents we have which verify that this basement has been used for multiple vehicles is that which we got from Glenn Coulter and Al Quagliari. We do not have any records from the town of Norfolk stating there was incidental use in the basement for the storage of automobiles. F2 of our zoning bylaws say a non-conforming use, pre-existing, prior to the, to the formation of a zoning bylaw is allowed by right. It does not require an F11 because there is no change in use. The use is continual since 1980. And the owner, and that's why an F11 is so important that it be filed by an owner. The owner of this building enjoys certain rights. One of those rights is he enjoys, he has a non-conforming pre-existing use auto storage in his basement. By letting a tenant fill out an F11 form, you're taking away the rights of the owner. And he may or may not be aware of that. <coughs> so it's very important that an F11A be filed by an owner. In this case, this was never sent to Mr. Quagliari. So he never had the opportunity to either file or not file an F11. Therefore, I ask this board to grant the appeal that the cars remain down there as they have since 1980, consistent with our non-conforming 
pre-existing bylaw, F2, and Chapter 40, Section 6 of the state bylaw, which also says that a use, and a use is a use. It's storage of automobiles. If I stored paper, if there was paper cups down there, and we had 10 boxes, and we increased it to 30 boxes, would that be a change in use? Absolutely not. And if you look at the spaces, as it was in one of the exhibits I gave you, Burks has two boats in his basement, which he rents, similar to how I rent. Those two boats take up almost 75% of his space. The space I rent, my 11 cars do not take up 75% of my space. So again, I ask you to grant this appeal. Thank you. Okay, uh, questions from members of the board for Mr. Weeder. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You're not appealing the fine that was assessed by Mr. Bullock. The fine is being appealed in Rentham District Court, which is where it has to be appealed. I am appealing the filing of an F-11. I am appealing the zoning violation that I am storing cars illegally in the B-1 district. Fine is being heard August 8th at Rentham District Court. Uh, I guess what was pointed out by yourself, the fact that <clears throat> the F-11A has to be filled out by the owner, it would appear from where I'm sitting that if it wasn't sent to the owner, then um, the appeal may be not necessary because, in fact, the um, requirement of following up and, 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 and not uh, fulfilling the request of the building commissioners to file a 111A, or F11A, was, in fact, incorrect since it didn't go to the person who's the owner. So um, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just confused here from that aspect of it because if the legal person has not filled out the form because the form or the request to fill out the form has not been asked of by the town, um, does that supersede or is it the responsibility of the owner to know these things? And therefore, that's not an issue. I, I'd like some help there. I look at you. The, <laughs> the owner has basically given me agency for tonight's hearing no. with regard to that. I, but I, yeah, it, 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 you, know, you, should, you should have come to Rentham District Court on August 8th because that is where your argument should be heard. It's how can a fine be imposed on a tenant when an owner must file the form. But that would be the August 8th hearing in Rentham District Court if you'd like to attend. Does ultimately the file have to be formed by the owner? An F-11A would have to be filed by the owner, but in this case, what you have to understand is, where is the change of use? If the building has always stored automobiles in the basement on both sides, mm -hmm. where is the change of use requiring an F-11A? If there is no change in use, it you can't ask for an F-11A to be filed. It is a non-conforming pre-existing use prior to the bylaw. So you would not file an F-11A because there hasn't been a change in use of the basement of that property. It has always had cars stored in it, as I gave you Exhibit 3 and Exhibit three and Exhibit 4, by all its owners. And again, if the town had records showing that it was incidental use, they could not produce them during a public records request. It is only hearsay at tonight's hearing that there was an incidental three or four maybe cars in the basement. Can I ask a question to uh, Bob Bullock? I'm just hearing Chris's testimony. Um, what is your exact opinion on how there was a change in use on this property? How there was a change of use? Yes. That any, any cars that were down there um, were incidental, uh, and not really considered a use, in my opinion. Uh, the cars that were, um, the boats that were stored were incidental use that uh, the, the restaurant used to store their um, store in their storage area for their uh, space. 
the um, the space that Mr. Weeder's in right now was the owner of the building, storing um, a few cars in there. Again, I've gone through this building every year. Unless they, they take those vehicles out, they're... Those vehicles weren't there every year that we that I went through that building. There were I I will tell you that there were times that there were a few vehicles in there, but nothing to the degree that's in there now. The other part that um, you know a non-conforming use a non-conforming use uh, can only be extended by 50 percent, um, and that's filing with a spe uh, by a special permit to the ZBA for a uh, extension of a non-conforming use. And you can only extend a non-conforming use by 50 percent, so that would be another issue. That um, so. And to that point, do you have any? So you, do you have any reports or any documentation? Essentially, just having concrete evidence to back up that there was only a few vehicles in that space. Uh, Again, we don't describe everything that we see, and uh, you know, when we do an inspection, we describe things that are uh, that are a violation. And in our opinion, you know, when we came down to the basement uh, this past um, year um, in November, it was blatantly obvious that there was a lot more vehicles here than than ever before. So, um, you know. It was definitely a, a difference of uh, from what it was in the past. I'm not out looking for violations. This is, you know, we're looking for, you know, making sure that the building's safe, uh, those type of things. I'm not looking for zoning violations. But when something presents it itself, you know, I feel as though being the zoning enforcement officer, uh, that we have zoning bylaws that the town has approved and I'm, I'm supposed to uphold those uh, bylaws. So, um, so I acted on it. Bob, let's. Do you have another question? No. Nope. Okay. Bob, let's assume it is a non-conforming pre-existing use. W what did you say about the 50 percent? Uh, you can only extend a non-conforming use up by 50 percent. That's F3C in the uh, zoning bylaws. F three C. C. Okay. Is that fifty percent of floor space, fifty percent of number of cars, fifty percent of tires and wheels? I mean what fifty percent what's the well what's the measurement? What's what's the use and you know that's creating the use? The to me the cars would be the created the use. And we have no hard numbers on what the let's say there were 15 <coughs> cars in there before at one time and now there's 18 so that's not 50 percent that's much uh, less you know i i, so I get it the board can a, decide so whatever number they want yeah. i i've said what i've said i've told you what i've seen in the past the board can make whatever decision they want to make on this uh it's up to you guys um i i just feel as though um i haven't asked anything that's unreasonable here uh, of Mr. Weeder to file the form. You know, the fact that there was a clerical error uh, that we should have sent it to the owner of the building. Uh, in your packet, you, you'll see a new application that's been highlighted in yellow that uh, has made all those changes on the forms uh, for the future. Uh, I wasn't aware that um, the applicant, um, uh, again, we've been doing this for 18 years and I've this is the first someone's ever complained about it. So, okay. Just, uh, Mr. Weeder, I want to go back to you. And anyone else who wants to jump in? So, when you said that the what bylaw is it, or where is it? Does it clarify that the owner is responsible for filling, for filling out the F11A? The F11A form and F11 and page. If you look it up, I think it's page. I forget what page it is of our zoning bylaw. I think I put it on your packages. Might be page 72. Clearly says it's the owner. The applicant must fill out the F11. And if you look on page three of our definitions of our zoning bylaws, the applicant is the owner or his authorized agent. The applicant is the owner, okay. And the non conforming pre existing use, how did you get to that conclusion? 
run that by us again. Again, the, the, the basement, Glenn Coulter, I mean, anybody in town who's been here knows that Glenn Coulter was a um, hot rodder. He stored his cars, and he stored many cars of fellow club members down in the basement. And when um, he left in 2014, Mr. Quagliari bought the building. He had, oh, survivor six of his cars in the building, plus front-end loaders and a couple other things. So it's always had, the use has always been the storage of motorized vehicles. So, and it's continuous, as is the boats on Burke's side of the basement. So therefore, that's why I consider it a non-conforming pre-existing use prior to the 1993 bylaw, which no longer allowed auto storage down in the basement. So your argument is that vehicles have been stored there prior to 1993? Correct. Since and 1980, which is what Glenn Coulter identified in Exhibit 3 of your package. <laughs> Similar to what goes on in the Wayside Building, but there seems to be no zoning enforcement down there. If you go to the Wayside Building on the back side, there are seven garages, five of which have automobiles, which are actually being worked on down there, which is not allowed in our B1 zoning district. But for some reason, there doesn't seem to be any zoning enforcement at the Wayside Building. Um, okay. Questions? My question remains the same about whether or not this has changed into a more commercial enterprise for the storing of vehicles as opposed to the personal use storage. It doesn't seem like we're necessarily going to get an answer about what was going on um, historically since that individual's not here and just said he stored his cars and others. I don't think he was paying himself to store his cars and his property, but I do think that that would constitute a change in use if suddenly it has switched over from friends mm -hmm. leaving vehicles down there to, to you know, an actual transactional commercial enterprise where there's rent being paid. Um, that's really the only question I have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make one more point, if sure. I could. Um, the property was, um, Mr. Coulter had sold the property to somebody else uh, prior to Mr. Quagliari that owned the property, I believe, two or three years. Uh, if there weren't any vehicles stored during that period of time, then that would uh, negate that... Um, uh, pre-existing. Yeah, that pre-existing use. Do we have a record Mr. of that? Mr. Coulter had cars down there till 2014. Mr. Quagliari bought the building in 2015. Uh, there was less than 23 months where the prior owner, RE Realty, had the building. And again, since there are no records, the only record we have is from Mr. Quagliari, where he has identified in Exhibit 4 that there was cars in that building when he bought the building from RE Realty. And uh, Chris, you're not selling these vehicles. The cars are just stored down there. None of them are sold. None of, there's no transactions going on. There's no work going on down there at all. The cars are just stored down there. So, uh, do you pay rent to store your cars there? I guess that would answer yes, my question. I, just like Burke's Restaurant, I pay rent for the space. Do you know if the prior individuals who had had vehicles down there did the same? Um, I am not aware of that. I did not. Uh, not my concern. Well, I guess the good news is that uh, the land use office is trying to um, clean this bylaw up, and it will be on an article on the warrant, hopefully, to uh, streamline this process and um, hand this over to uh, another part of town government. So uh, not that that has anything to do with what we're dealing with tonight, but uh, uh, hopefully um, this sort of thing will be avoided in the future once the um, bylaw is, is cleaned up and uh, uh, comes back out. So, anyways, um, any questions or comments from people in the uh, public? No. Mr. Quigliari, please identify yourself. Grab a microphone. Al Quagliari, owner of 194 Main Street. So I'd like to address some of the points Mr. Bullock made, uh, specifically to start his reliant on fire inspections, and he, uh, quoted 177 and 17711 as two of the codes that would allow him to inspect, um, allow him to accompany the fire chief 
Well, what he failed to leave out is, you know, two sections below that, 1774, where it says, before entering the approving uh, authority with jurisdiction shall obtain the consent of the occupant before the thereof, or obtain a proper warrant authorizing entry for the purpose of inspection. It's one paragraph down from the ones he cited. He went into this building, unconsented, unknown to me, and that's a trespass. The law states he needs to get consent of the owner. And to say that I've never protested before when I don't know that they're entering my building and searching it is ridiculous. This is offensive that he is doing this and, and manipulating and coming to you guys and for a better word, lying about his rights. He does not have the right to enter this building and do inspections unconsented of the owner. It's right here, black and white, 527 CMR. This is the code for fire inspections. So Mr. Bullock is not being truthful for you. He goes on excuse to me. say, MG, excuse, excuse me. me, I'm talking. Excuse me. Mr. Kaliza, please let me have the floor. I didn't interrupt I Mr. Bullock. I read a document that was from the fire chief. Yeah. I didn't write the document. I based my inspection. You're here reciting the document, based, Bob. Based on You're the fire reciting chief the document, inviting Bob. Inviting me in to do the inspection. So you entered a building you don't have the right to, and I will be in court, and we will adjudicate this in court, and we'll, we'll see who's right, Bob Bullock, That's the right. angel, or the building owner, who has the law on his side. I'll go on, Mike, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Is, is it, does this pertain to? This pertains to everything that Bob used as a statement of fact so that you guys can make a determination. If you don't want me to offer rebuttal and make a determination without the real to, facts, uh, then I won't. Now, Al, I just want to make sure you stay on point. I, I mean, am on point. Th this is a hearing of, uh, against the building commissioners. I want to make sure that you're just staying on point here. I am on point. Okay. All right. He used, he used this inspection criteria to access the building illegally. He also, and he stated that, he can say that that came from the fire chief, but he s sat here and testified to that. All right, he also used 148, persons authorized to enter and inspect premises of institutions. This is not an institution. This is not a uh, assisted living. It's not an institution. It doesn't apply here. Neither does entry of premises, removal of combustible materials. So he's citing these bylaws where he has the right to access, and he doesn't. If we want to go you know, f further into it, the fire chief states in his document that this use has been seen there many years. He is attesting to exactly what Chris stated. He has been down there previous times, and this is the use that's gone on. I'm trying to figure out if Bob Bullock is saying it's an expansion of a non-conforming use or it's not an allowed use. And I, I don't have an answer to that based on what he's saying. He's, he's just throwing a lot of balls out there and hoping, hopefully one sticks. I'll, I'll make another uh, mention. He fined a tenant of the previous owner um, because the tenant was not allowed per zoning. And he sent that violation in the notice to the owner, not the tenant. I have that information here if you want a copy of it. So in this particular case, he chose to send it to Chris, the tenant. But a year earlier, he sent the violation notice out, and he sent it right to the building owner. Now, Bob knows my cell phone number. Bob knows my address. Bob knows that I own the building. But he chose not to send me the violation, me the F11 requirement, he chose to send it to Chris. And why does that matter? I think he has a, a vendetta against Chris for a previous ruling from the CBA board. And, uh, you know, it's just convenient that he sends it to Chris this time, but not the building owner. As far as those, the use down there, that use, and you, can, you cannot move walls. That use is there. It's not expanded. It's a certain amount of square feet, and that use has always been that amount of square feet. We have not expanded that use one bit. 
When I bought that building, there were vehicles there. Part of the agreement of that building was it to be emptied because I wanted to put my vehicles there. One of the reasons I bought that building. I filled that basement up with six cars, a backhoe, uh, machines so I could plow, so I could landscape, so I could maintain the area over the septic. So if Bob Bullock was truly doing inspections, he would have saw that. And uh, you know, I, I don't know what is fact and fiction with Bob because so much of it gets personal and you know, he just doesn't want to acknowledge that. Never wants to acknowledge the personal aspect of some of his rulings. You know, you, you talk about his F-11s. He gave an F-11 to a bank and it specifically says right on the form, banks are not allowed to get F-11 relief. So he applies the F-11 where he feels it benefits maybe his friends, maybe people connected with him. But a bank is required by F-11 to go in front of the planning board and get planning board approval. Just a year earlier, he gave the bank a free ride to move out of that into another building that has no town water, that doesn't have handicap accessible ramps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could go on and on and show you the hypocrisy of his rulings, but, you know, I think this, on the merits, this was a non-conforming use, it's never been interrupted by two years. You have documentation from previous owners, and there's never been a report by Mr. Bullock, not one. Since 2005, I have no reports that he ever did an inspection on this building. None, zero. Doesn't that tell you everything? Is this building so pristine that it never had a deficiency in it? Not a light bulb out, nothing? Zero, it's a perfect building. Can I respond to that? Sure, go ahead. I don't write the reports. I'm not doing the inspections. The fire chief is. Whether or not he wrote him uh, those reports is up to the fire chief. I was there along with the fire chief, but the fire chief is the one doing those inspections. All I'm concerned about is the, uh, the um, restaurant that I was there for and helping him do his inspection. <coughs> but as far as any reporting goes, it would be coming from the fire chief. The other, the other point I want to make is I'm there once a year, generally in the late fall, uh, in the November, December. I'm not walking through the building during the year to see what, what's going on during uh, the rest of the year. <coughs> so. Can we request a copy of, yes. uh, Al, do you have an extra copy of that fire code you were referencing? <coughs> I'd like to see that too. Amy, could you make a couple of copies of that? Just a, I, I think whatever Al, it's, it's a direct bearing, whatever she's making a copy of has a direct bearing on this. Mm -hmm. I would agree. All right. Um, any other comments or questions from uh, folks in the audience? Mike, can I give you this also? This is the notification Bob gave to the previous building owner of a tenant violation and then the fine associated with that. Not the tenant. Who was this to Al? Who's this Mr. Levy? I bought the building off of. Okay. He had a tenant there that Bob said wasn't allowed by zoning. Okay. And Bob fined the building owner $300 a day and cited the building owner, not the tenant. Oh, not the tenant. Okay. I saw that. He's going to yeah. pass that along. Okay. Let's get that to Amy for the record. All right. So I'm going to um, whatever document that Mr. Quigley has provided to the board. We'll enter that into the uh, record as testimony. Uh, I'll initial that as soon as it comes this? back. Are you doing this too? Uh, yeah. Okay. So and I, I'd like before oh. you. And Mike, one last point. BIG excavating paid rent on that space. Up, excuse me. Up until Chris Weida rented the space. The building is owned by Bella Plaza LLC. BIG excavating rents that space downstairs up until Chris. Okay, um, 
Does everyone feel comfortable we have enough information to make no, a decision? No, I, I don't. I'd like to, before we go any further, I'd like to see oh, okay. the, the, what Amy, Amy's making a copy of All right. requiring um, notice of entry. Uh, I'd like to add one comment. Um, as far as the inspections go with the fire chief, the fire chief asked me to go along on these inspections for the past 15 years. I never questioned whether or not he had a legal right or not. Is that naive on my part? Maybe. Uh, you know, the, um, to go and do these inspections and coordination as one of those uh, bylaws uh, that he stated uh, makes sense, but uh, as far as all the legalities of the fire prevention code, uh, I had asked him for those uh, that document, and he gave it to me uh, just prior to him leaving. So, um, you know, as far as what exactly the fire prevention code says, uh, I've never read it. Okay, so, so we're looking for. So page three. Yep. 1.774. I'm going to read that out loud again, Mr. Chairman. Before entering, the AHJ shall obtain the consent of the occupant, excuse me, occupant thereof, or obtain a proper warrant authorizing entry for the purpose of inspection, except where an emergency exists, or as otherwise permitted by law. And, and I guess how that would seem to impact this, and please excuse me, Fedora, because I'm not an attorney, but if all of the evidence, when I watch TV shows, okay, <laughs> if the evidence is collected without going through the proper legal process, it seems that the evidence is thrown out. I can't comment on your viewing choices, and whether or not <laughs> law and order, you, know, you can call for DNA while we're here too if you want. But realistically speaking, I mean, you could also use the last sentence that says, or as otherwise permitted by the law, and, and try to decide which section of the code allows the entry, which, which does not. I, you know, my concern from the zoning perspective is more the continuous use. Um, here, whether you know whether or not they want to make an argument that there was a, as I believe, select woman Van Tyne referred to it, a um, entering without breaking, um, that's outside of my purview, as even just an associate member of this board, so I will not <laughs> get into that with you. Mr. Chairman, uh, the fact that this is going to court, we still need to make a ruling on. Yeah, I don't think the the court. Uh, hearing impacts what decision we have to uh, render. Uh, I think it's a separate issue. Um, you know, it's tan tangential to what we're trying to decide, but I, I wouldn't hold this us making a decision up uh, because of what's going to go on in Rentham. Okay. Again, anyone disagree or have a different opinion? Not. I, I mean, I guess my question would be, what, is it just the fine that's being contested in the proceeding on the 8th of August, or is there an actual contention? I mean, what? No, oh, it's actually the, uh, the building commissioner, uh, he does not send out his, his letters certified. The building commissioner is contending that I did not file an F-11 within seven days of receipt of the letter, which is inappropriate, and that's why I'm, that is what I'm filing the, the, uh, the in Rentham District Court for to prove that it was filed within seven days of receiving it, by me from the building inspector. So it has nothing to do with this case. It is basically a, a, uh, I am appealing his $300 fine for not filing an F-11, which again, according to the law, I'm not lawfully allowed to file. And again, I also have to I have seven days to file from the time of receipt. And since it is not sent certified, I only received it five days before I filed it, which I did go to the administrative clerk for the ZBA. I did file in an appropriate manner. Uh, the reason it did not get done probably in Mr. Bullock's eyes was that the town hall, town clerk's office was closed on May 7th due to an election. So therefore, it had to be filed on the 8th, the day after the election. So I'll be, I'll be addressing that in Rentham District Court. It has nothing to do with this case. It's a separate case, and it is a $300 fine. Mike, may I just read one thing from the Chief's report? Okay. <coughs> Located 
within the base, paragraph four, located within the base an area where a number of stored automobiles, many foreign manufactured, past inspections have found such storage under the building's former owner. This is the fire chief attesting to the history of this. You have documents from the former owner, from myself. You have the fire chief attesting to that. There's been no expansion of use. There's been rent paid. I think all the questions have been answered. This was an illegal entry. He didn't have the right to go there. To me, this board should be offended as the building owner. Okay. You don't have information. I think we've gathered enough. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Make a motion that we close the public hearing regarding 194 Main Street. I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, what do we have left? I'm thinking what we'll do. We'll, we can do one or two things. Uh, thank you, Bob. Yep. Um, we can have Mr. Weeder come back up, complete the agenda. I don't think it'll take that long to complete the agenda. And then what's the purview of the board? Do you want to deliberate this tonight? Do you want to noodle on the testimony that we've taken in tonight? Think about it and deliberate next month. What's the pleasure of the board? I think I'm ready. You're ready? Okay. Ready. Ready? Ready. Ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Then we'll deliberate this tonight. Um, why don't we complete the agenda, Mr. Weeder, if you don't mind coming back up, finishing the agenda, and then we'll, uh, I'll take back over. Welcome back. All right, it is now 8.20, and we are going to continue the public hearings. We have 81 Pond Street Special Permit. The owner has asked the board if we could withdraw without prejudice. There, uh, I think it says 81 Pond Street Special Permit, but I think it's an 81 Pond Street appeal, Amy. It was actually an appeal. It was. Yeah. So the owners have, uh, they have filed a new F-11 with the building department. Um, I wish Mr. Bullock hadn't left. Uh, and they're working through the details with Commissioner Bullock to get that F-11 approved, which will then allow them to continue bringing a new business into town, which is going to be a hairdresser salon. And uh, that's, uh, that's good news all the way around. Uh, I would have liked to ask Mr. Bullock, but I can't now, why we required them to file another $100 fee for the second F-11. Is, um, like, do you know, is there any administrative, or Amy, is there any administrative cost other than the fact that we pay our employees that would require an F-11 to require another fee? Um, F-11s are pretty much for the building department. I don't have any facility. Hmm? Would you check on that? Because it seems odd that we would charge twice. When we, I know we're, as a town, we're not trying to make money on our, on our potential. So could I have a motion to uh, withdraw without prejudice the 81 Pond Street appeal from 6519? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is now 821. Uh, the 6 Hill Street appeal obviously is tied very closely to the 4 and 6 Hill Street special permits. The applicant, uh, Mr. Quagliere, he has asked us to continue that appeal until August 21st. So I would like to entertain a motion to continue that Could hearing to uh, in a moment. Um, to continue that public hearing to August 21st at 7.05 p.m. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Quagliari. Sorry about that, Chris. Um, I just wanted to add, um, 4 and 6 was an appeal of an F-11. And, uh, you know, these things, the F-11, have to be answered per your regulations within 15 days. And the reason f that Mr. Bullock authorized the second F-11 is 16 days passed and he didn't answer it. So he felt exposed. So he convinced them to file a new one. Okay, so this they, is regard to Pond Street? Yes. 
they okay. enjoy so the you, you they you enjoy the hundred dollar uh, surcharge because he didn't answer within fifteen days. Okay, we're talking about E one Pond Street. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. We will. Um, our town administrator will look into that and hopefully get back to us with that. Okay. Uh, the other new business we have is last month we approved a special permit mm -hmm. for nine Chestnut Road in Norfolk. Uh, at the time, one of the finding of facts from finding number eight was that we said that this will continue to be a two-bedroom residential structure. Looking at the assessor's cards, it was identified that this property is actually listed as a three-bedroom residential structure. So I, I would ask for a minor modification by the board to the special permit, case 2019-2, item number eight, that we identify that it is a three-bedroom residential unit, not a two-bedroom residential unit. Just a quick question. Um, yes, sir. If I remember during the hearing and the finding of facts, we didn't have anything identifying it as a three. -bedroom. We did not. It was, uh, I think, the um, applicant had basically said that he a uh, two-family, two-bedroom. Right. But then the assessor's sure. card showed that it was actually okay. A three so this is new information. Correct. Past the hearing. Okay. Right. Right. We made so we're, you're looking to modify case two zero one nine dash two. Correct. You've got it, Joe. You can read it. <laughs> Correct. Excuse me, Mr. Item Chairman. Eight. Yes. Uh, Devin, go ahead. Make that uh, point. So. We, we made the motion. It was second. And we discussed it, and we haven't voted on it yet. Which what motion are you referring Four, to? Or Six Hill Street. Okay. The um, the appeal. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you, Devin. So we made a motion. We second. We had discussion with regard to four and six field appeal. We had discussion from Mr. Quagliari. Do we have a motion to continue that public hearing until August 21st at 7:05 p.m.? So moved. Okay. Second. Again. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Uh, back to the Aye. minor modification. So. I make a motion that we modify <coughs> the decision for 9 Chestnut Road, item 8 in the finding of facts, that this will still continue to be a three-bedroom residential structure, as is the assessor's card, versus the stated two-bedroom <coughs> residential structure in the decision. Right. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in <coughs> favor? Uh, Aye. Great. Amy, you can make that. Okay, I don't know. All right. Again, at this time, I will um, recuse myself and turn the uh, chair over to Mr. Kaliza, who will handle the deliberation of 194 Main Street. And uh, get us some coffee. You will. Uh, I would, uh, and I will also uh, recuse myself from the rest of the hearing, so you can close out the uh, the zoning board meeting this evening. Can as I well, stay around, listen to yeah. us I will stay around. Yes, I will stay around. But I, instead of coming back up, I will. Take my chair in the audience and uh, and listen closely. All right, I'm not going to move. Thank you. Um, all right, so unlike um, most deliberations uh, on uh, variances and uh, special permits, the special permits we have criteria that we have to go through. Variance, there are different criteria that we have to go through and, and discuss. This is a little bit different. It's an appeal of the building commissioner's decision. So we're going to forego the uh, normal protocol of mm -hmm. uh, various criteria. Um, and I think what we'll do is, you know, everyone will get to weigh in on what their thought, thoughts are on this. Um, I'll, I'll start off by saying that, um, um, as most of you can probably tell, this is um, there's a history here between Mr. Quickleary and the building commissioner. Uh, this, I'm not going to mince words here. This is bad blood. And when there's a case of bad blood, it always makes it difficult to, uh, to uh, make a decision. Uh, you know, I, I like Bob Bullock, I like Mr. Quickleary, Chris Wheat is our chairman. So you've got all these personalities, and um, when there's um, this Taffy Pull and McCoy and Hassel situation, it, it's difficult to decide what to do. So in a case like this, I, I, I personally have tried to focus on a few basic facts. And we can add to or delete those facts, mm -hmm. but. Um, my thoughts are this. Number one, uh, I, I don't buy the trespassing argument. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's an issue. I think the fire chief um, can inspect property just for the safety of the town. Uh, I think if he had to get consent from every building that he had to inspect in town, that would be an onerous process. Uh, I, I read what it said in there, but I, I'm, I'm not convinced that the, the, the trespassing is a, is a solid argument. The things that, there are a couple things that I, I focused on and, you know, again, um, 
it, this goes back and forth. But the point is that the owner is, by our bylaws, responsible for filling out the application. Bob referred to it as a clerical error, but in this particular case, it seems very relevant that you know the application or the request went to Mr. Weeder. It should have gone to Mr. Quiglieri. I think if that process had been followed properly, you know, we might not be here tonight. I don't know. So my, my first point is that uh, I think there was uh, an oversight, call it whatever you want, on the town's part, and, and, and the process was not handled properly. Secondly, the non-conforming pre-existing use. I have heard enough testimony that I believe there's enough consistency in the use and storage, uh, whether rent was paid or not paid. In my opinion, personally, is not important. I think that uh, my Thank microphone. <laughs> I think we're looking at use, and the, and the use has been consistent. How we measure the 50% expansion, um, you know, is it 75% of the space, 50% of the space? I mean, I, I don't know if, if there's any way to really measure that, so I, I, I can't see why that would be an issue. And, um, you know, th those are the two things that I've tried to, to try to find a way to make a decision on this. Uh, those two things would lead me to believe that the use that's currently there is um, permiss permissible, and I'd be interested to hear what everyone else has to say. I'll, I'll just add that that's what I'm kind of hinging what I feel about this is that the use has been continuous and that hasn't been broken let's say at least for a number of years like two years or so I think that we have some continuous use that's been there from the beginning so it's hard for me to say that that's that may be what hinges our decision right yeah. there yeah, I, I agree as well as well I, I think also renting the space versus the owner occupying that space with his own vehicles yeah. I think in this case I don't think that's uh, I think that use is still continued right. because it, it's just it's storage of vehicles right. yeah. you're not you know, not a change in use the yeah the right. tenants not selling vehicles down there they're not storing those vehicles to sell mm -hmm. it's it was storage of vehicles before mm -hmm. yeah. storage of vehicles now right. I, I agree. I, I, I think that the uh, uh, written uh, comments from the previous owner plays in my mind that he has had vehicles down there right. for years. And mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, uh, even by some of the other comments that it appears that boats were in below the Borks restaurant under rental agreements of some type, but well, he was renting space for people to store some boats. Again, it, it, it kind of establishes the fact that this is what that space was used for. And I guess you come down to whether it's five vehicles or 10 vehicles or whatever the number is, okay, is it really substantially different if it's in the same area? If instead of two boats, Borks had six boats in the same area, okay, would that make a difference, okay? And we're not even discussing that side of the building. Right. So there was also some additional information, I believe, that we have in our packets about even Norfolk Power had equipment stored in yes, the same space. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Right. When I said right. the previous right. owner, right. Glenn Coulter, talked right. about that, yes. Right. And he said right. both his vehicles and others. Right. We have no idea whether we rented it or not, but that's irrelevant. And supporting Mike, I don't, uh, I don't think we have anything to measure the percentage. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, Again, it's kind of hard to get our arms around that. It's not like you're, you're expanding a foundation right. or something like that, you know. Uh, Dorian, any comments? I think it, it certainly appears the use is continuous. I don't think necessarily that the volume of vehicles or power equipment that's stored down there is necessarily relevant. It clearly didn't trigger a safety concern from the fire chief as well, based upon his report. Right. Right. I would have been more concerned if historically these were just owner vehicles being stored down there and it had changed into more of a commercial enterprise but the only testimony we received um, indicates that other individuals have previously paid rent as part of the continuous use um, including the folks who store boats down there so I would say it, it doesn't appear to be an interrupted use or a change in use that's so significant to right. and it's merit, never been you know eliminating the um, the uh, not luxury but the the availability of that use okay, okay. Um, I, I think we've got a pretty uh, solid consensus 
uh, what direction we would we, we'd like to go in. Um, the um, board, uh, if you have any other, uh, any, don't have any other thoughts, I think we'll go ahead and um, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yeah, let's to what? We have to grant the appeal? Uh, let's see. No, let's, let's figure this out before we make the motion. Yeah. Uh, this is an appeal of the building commissioner decision requiring a filing of a, a, a form LF, F11A. So what we're basically saying is, no, you don't have to file the form F11A. So who wants to wordsmith that? <laughs> I'm going to outsource that. The board determines, based upon evidence submitted, that the filing of an F11A form was not in actuality required in this circumstance. In this circumstance. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Did you catch that, Amy? Can you, can you get that? So does a motion, does her motion count? <laughs> does that count as she making the motion? If you can, no, can restate that, I move. Oh, again? Okay. Um, I move that it be the determination of this board um, that based upon testimony and evidence submitted, um, we determined that the filing of an F11A form was not warranted in the circumstances due to pre-existing continuous non-conforming use. A second. Uh, any discussion? All right, I do want to make one comment, and, and that is, you know, Mr. Quigliari, I, I do know that there are hard feelings between you and Mr. Bullock. Uh, I, I do think he does try to do a good job most of the time. Uh, the, the personal attacks on him, I think we're a little out of line tonight, but um, uh, the facts are in your favor. And um, so let, let's move forward with a vote. Um, all in favor? Oh, you have to do a, is it an individual vote? No. In this no. case, you don't have to. Just say all in favor? Just all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Excuse me, Mike. I have those comments stricken from the record. You made those comments during the vote. Are those going into the record? I, we can strike them from the record, and I'll make them after the I vote. I don't believe they're accurate. Okay. You mm. only know one side of the story. Okay. So to comment on that publicly on TV, Okay, well then I'll, let, let's strike those from the record, and then uh, we've taken our vote, and I'll say, Mr. Quigliari, I think you were a little out of line tonight in attacking Mr. Bullock. Uh, I know there's bad blood and hard feelings between the two of you, but I think you crossed the line a little bit tonight. But uh, the facts are in your favor, uh, and um, the board found, found that to be the case. So anyways, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Technically, we, 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 we closed the meeting, the, the tonight's meeting.